Okay, next we're going to have our morning keynote speaker. And one of the things that we try to do with each of the conferences is to both bring in experts from outside of campus on various topics, and that's who you'll be hearing from this afternoon for the luncheon keynote. But we also like to look to the campus and identify people who have a great career here and a positive message about navigating the campus and taking care of your own career. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce Berinder Dylan Flanagan. She's currently the interim director of Campus Shared Services, Human Resources, and Academic Personnel. Over her 27-year career here at Berkeley, she's built a great reputation for championing excellent customer service and modeling results-driven leadership. Check out her profile in the program for more information. And by the way, bios of everyone who's participating today are there. And she's held a variety of positions on campus, uh, throughout the campus, um, and starting you know, with a position as a, an administrative assistant, a senior clerk, and now she's a deputy director. So you too can rise to the heights. <laughs> so she's here to share some of her uh, advice and lessons learned along the way in her career, and we are sure that it's going to inspire each and every one of you. So please welcome Berinder Dylan Flanagan. Hi, good morning, everyone. Oh, come on. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful Friday at Cal. And it's raining, so what a wonderful thing. So I am really humbled and honored to be invited to be the keynote speaker here today. Um, there's many, many people on this campus that make us a great institute. And so when I was asked, I was excited, nervous, and here I am. Um, two things I'm really grateful for. One is this podium, because you can't see me shaking like a chihuahua behind this podium. So um, I prepared uh, about 20 minutes of talking about what I have done here and how I have navigated the system. And thank God for the rain also, and I'm happy to be here. So with that, I'm going to get started. Okay, so um, I am Brenda Flanagan. As Sid introduced me, I am the interim deputy director for CSS HR, and my side job is I am the deputy director for IT and campus shared services. Okay, so content for today, for this morning, for the 25 minutes I have, a little bit about me and goals and objectives, my career journey of how I learned things here and how I advanced my professional development, how to approach professional development here, know the current trends for skills. I think that's really important to know. What are the skills that are being used on this campus and also at other UCs? Key components for success, so I'm going to talk a little bit about networking, presentation, fill the void, and then a conclusion. Okay, so goals and objectives. I'm hoping um, I'll talk a little bit about how I'm successful in this UC culture, what has worked for me, and tips and resources. And if you walk away with just one lesson learned from here, I will be very happy about that. Uh, we always go to uh, trainings and such and think, oh, we have to learn everything. But in my experience, if I learn one thing and I use it and try it, it's wonderful. Okay, so a little bit about me. Yes, that's me years and years ago. Um, I think I was trying to do the Princess Diana hairstyle or something, I don't know. Um, so the certificate I'm holding is for the Chancellor's Outstanding Staff Award Certificate. And look at the phone. That'll tell you how old this picture is. There's a staff member, one of my colleagues here, who's sitting in the audience. She, she probably even remembers when this picture was taken. Um, I have a PMI certification, project management certification, ITIL certification. And I am, I've been told I'm one of the managers on this campus who has won the Excellence in Management Award from my staff 
from two different departments twice. Um, I have lived over three continents, so I'm very comfortable with change, and I'm obviously also very com comfortable with different cultures. I grew up in England. I, my high school was from England. I finished my college in India, and the last 10 years I've been here. And that kind of makes me 30 years old, and I've been here 27 <laughs> years. Okay, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, my career journey, so I'm gonna go a little slow to the next three slides and then we'll go through it much faster. I started as a senior clerk and TAP. There used to be a fantastic temporary agency program at UC Berkeley where we, were, um, we would sign up. It was run by, use, uh, by um, HR, by Central HR, and they would deploy temporary staff for appointments. Um, I came here on a student visa, and I thought, oh, well, I'll do a little job here for a little while, get, you know, collect some money, and then I'll go back to school, and that was 28 years ago. Um, I was an AA2, which I applied for, an AA3, Administrative Assistant 3, if you don't know what the AA stands for anymore. And I was in those positions for seven years, and I realized I was hitting a ceiling. Administrative Assistant 3 positions, those are the most challenging, that is the most challenging place to have career advancement from. One, you're trying to figure out which path you want to take, what skill you want to pursue. And two, when you apply for jobs, people keep saying, well, you don't have that experience. And I'm like, well, how am I going to get that experience if I don't get a job? And so there was a decision I made at that time that I was going to apply for a lateral AA3 position. This was probably one of the best decisions I made in the 28 years, and you will see why. Through this lateral position, a 3 position, there happened to be a reorg and a change in leadership. I don't know if you know, but we do a lot of changes in leaderships, and we do a lot of reorgs here, right? And you think that's a change, and that's scary. It's not. That is actually a perfect opportunity for you to try something different and almost reset your whole career here, okay? So with that lateral AA3, I got to be an interim supervisor for a supervisor who was out on medical leave for her child, and I was asked to step in as an interim supervisor. That was my biggest break in supervision. So I got experience supervising staff. It was only a staff of two, right? Regardless, it was still supervising staff. So I was filling the void, because this was an interim temporary assignment. Then I said, oh, this sounds good. This is really nice. I got some experience. Let me try for other jobs. And I really got interested in IT. When I was the interim supervisor, I was given an opportunity to lead a large IT project for the campus. It was called Subscription Home IP Services. It was internet services for students in their home. It was a paid service. And so I got a taste of IT and project management, and I decided to apply active search. So I was looking for jobs to apply for what was a programmer analyst too. I don't even know if that position's still around. I don't think it is that classification. And I did not get that job. And I said, okay. So I decided to call up that department and I said, can I have, can I go have a meeting with the director there? And they said, oh, absolutely. So I met with the director, had coffee, and I said, you know, I didn't get the job this time, and, but please keep me in mind, because I'm really interested in pursuing my IT career. That was the most important network connection that I made on this campus to this date. Okay, and three weeks later, I get a call, and they said, are you still interested in the program around this two position? And I said, yes, absolutely. What happened? Sir, so, well, the top candidate, we couldn't accommodate his salary. 
right? And since we are internal, you all know, we get salary increases, and I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> and, and they said, oh, by the way, Brenda, you, the way you handled um, the rejection of that job gracefully, and you met with that director was really admirable, and you really left a mark on her. And she asked us, why aren't we calling our second candidate to come in and do this job? Okay, so then there was another reorg, and I was in RSSP IT all of a sudden, and I was again um, asked to be the interim manager because the manager at that time went back to school to get his graduate degree. And by now I had started getting used to being in change and volunteering and filling the void. And I said, I'll do it, I'll do it. And so that actually became a permanent manager position. Next, there was a big project. So at this time we started talking about shared services and centralizing services. And Student Affairs decided they were going to centralize their IT services. We were the first ones to go through the door of centralizing IT services. And I said, oh, I will volunteer to lead that effort. So if you know anything about Student Affairs, there's Office of the Registrar, RSSP, Housing and Dining, Admissions. There's many departments in Student Affairs. So I got the opportunity to lead the effort of combining service desk and desktop support. And through this volunteer position, I did get a title, Associate Director. I got a little bit of money, and that was OK, too. And next. I said, oh, campus shared services. Look, we're, we're expanding our shared services to the campus. And through an active search, I hope you're seeing now that there's a theme here, right? Active search. You have to keep looking. You have to keep looking for opportunities that are out there. Um, I applied for the director position at CSSIT, and I did get approval from my current boss to share the story with you. And I did not get that job. Once again, I said, hmm, I'm going to this time do an informational interview with the new person that we have hired. And he was very gracious, and we had coffee. And I said, I'm still interested. I want to be in campus shared services. And what opportunities do you have? And he said, well, Brenda, I've got a lot of opportunities. I'm going to be listing jobs, and please look out for that. And I applied for the deputy director position there. I did get that job. That's the job I'm in now. Um, it came with compensation. And the experience that I had had in student affairs IT for combining all of the ITs under one umbrella really paid off in getting this position on campus. And now I am the CSSHR um, Deputy Director Interim. So as you can see, I'm very comfortable with change, and I'm really comfortable with making myself uncomfortable every two or three years. And so again, there was a leadership change. So if you know Campus Shared Services had a leadership change, and I went to the new leader, reset for me, right? And I said, here's my resume, here's my skills, and I'm here to help. And she said, oh, OK, really? Next day, I get a call and said, we have a void. Would you like to step in to be the CSSHR deputy director? And that's how I got this opportunity. And I'm thinking maybe I'll call our ABC Janine Raymond next and have an informational interview with her and see what's happening in HR. Um, sorry, I just saw this side of the room, so sorry. Um, good morning. <laughs> and look, there's people up in the balcony too, hello. Um, so that's my career journey, fill the void. Okay, how to approach professional development on this campus. Um, do you know what you want to pursue? I often have conversations with my staff. They say, I want a promotion. I want another job. What, would you, what do you want to do? I think you have to work on that and figure out through classes, through talking to friends, through career coaches. There's a lot of resources on this campus. Figure out what it is that you want to pursue. I'm going to talk a little bit about transferable skills. 
Um, always look at job postings. So you saw active search, active search, active search, right? There's job postings on the UCOP website. They list all 10 campus job postings, UC Berkeley. And notice I intentionally left out LinkedIn, right? You're probably wondering why she said LinkedIn. Well, because we want you to stay here. Don't worry about LinkedIn. Just look at the UC Berkeley job listings, okay? <laughs> Of course we know about LinkedIn. Um, keep your resume and a generic cover letter updated at all times. Um, let me tell you a story. Um, last year we were hiring for our administrative assistant and someone said there's a great staff member and I said, well, tell them to apply. The job is closing at five. It's been open for two weeks and the person called this person and they said, do you have your cover letter and resume ready because you need to apply for that job. It closes at five. And within an hour, this young lady had applied for that position and she's working with us. So you may get that chance. It might be just one hour. So keep your resumes updated. And you might think that, oh, I haven't had a different job. So what am I updating my resume for? That's not true. Your experiences all should also be updated on your resumes, okay? Lateral job movement, not a bad thing. My one lateral movement, job movement on this campus has got me where I am. And you know, you think it's demoralizing, why am I just doing a lateral movement? Lots of things come through that. Your networking, your learning experiences expand. So it's really important. How long should you stay in one job? So my first job I stayed seven years, that was too long. You have to move within four to five years. At about the five year mark, you have probably mastered your job and I bet you you're getting really bored and you think your supervisor may not know that you mastered the job and you can do more, they do. So either start looking for other jobs or go to your supervisor and say, what projects can I work on? Okay, I've mastered this, I have time, I have a little bit of time, little project, small project, that's okay. That will help you learn, okay? The team is also learning, because um, we're in a learning institute. So know the current trends for skills. So higher ed industry skills, what's happening right now at higher ed? Project management, agile management, business analysts, right? Lean Six Sigma, it's a certification for business process mapping, so make sure you get those certifications. Contracts and grants, shared services. UC Berkeley has gone towards shared services. Other campuses are calling us and saying, we're ready to do some shared services in these four functions, and what have you done and how have you done it? So we know there's gonna be opportunities out there. There is UC Path coming at UC Riverside. If you're like me, an empty nester and you don't mind moving, be ready for that. There's gonna be lots of opportunities. Student affairs officers. I wanted to put student affairs in here because I grew up in student affairs. Uh, my last 10, 10 to 12 years I was in student affairs. It's a specialty. There are student affairs officers that take care of our great students that live with us in the residence halls, right? Okay, so staff skills, what should you be working on? Problem solving, project planning again, and project management, facilitation skills. You go to meetings sometimes and you look at each other and you don't know who's leading the meeting and you don't know who's facilitating the meeting, right? I always raise my hand and say, I'll facilitate this meeting if nobody else says. Those are skills. Those are facilitation skills. Cost and benefit analysis. With all our budget cuts, as you know, we're always being asked to do some sort of cost analysis. Uh, business analysts, we already talked about. Metrics is a new trend. So Campus Shared Services is very much a, a metrics-driven organization, and that's a special skill that people have to have um, to come up with reports and charts and all that good stuff. Leading change, active listening skills, and change management. Manager skills that are trending. Keys courses, so campus has keys supervisory courses. Anybody can take those. Take advantage of those. Make sure those are really great courses that are free here. Soft skills, um, these are some of the soft skills. Last year, I was the chair for the Excellence in Management Award Committee, 
and staff put in um, applications for nominating their managers for winning this award, and we were able to collect some themes. What are staff saying they want in their managers? And professional development, helping staff with professional development. It's okay to say to a staff member, let's sit down and update your resume and work with you and look for jobs if you are ready to make that movement. That's okay. Um, collaboration, not just within your teams, but across teams too, in different departments too. Building communities, solicit input, and mentors. Do you have a strong network on campus? This is a campus that is a close-knit family. We're huge, but we still know each other. When you stay 28 years here, it is a big network. It's, we have our own LinkedIn network going on. Um, Berkeley staff, campus staff organization, I have always stayed connected with them. Um, they provide me an opportunity to get to know staff from all the departments. And when you come together there, they also sometimes tell you, oh, there's an opportunity. We have a job listing. We have a job posting. So those are some of the campus staff organizations. Mentors. Friends can be mentors, but it's really hard for mentors, for friends to be objective. They mostly want to be empathetic and sympathetic if something's not going right. Look for mentors that are diverse, both culturally and professionally. It's really important. Mentors can give you objective opinions, and it's good if it's not somebody exactly like you, right? Be a little uncomfortable and learn new things from someone. Informational interviews. Um, this was one of the most powerful things that I have used to advance my career here, and it may be that not this time, but you know, you're building a connection, and those connections stay a long time. Organizational and political awareness. Movers and shakers. There are movers and shakers across campus and in each department. You don't have to become their best friends, but just be aware and know who they are. Um, personal board of directors, I really like this. I have a few people. I have few people here, I have few people at UCOP, I have someone at UC Riverside. They are my mirrors. It's really hard for us to sometimes look in the mirror and correct ourselves, and it's nice when someone can tell you and give you constructive feedback. Promoters, when I'm feeling down and you know, um, they also help build my confidence. When I'm feeling down, I check in and say, hmm, and I say, no, no, it's okay, keep going, keep doing what you're doing, you'll be fine. And sanity checks. It's really important for that for mentors. Let me tell you a little story. So when I didn't get the CSSIT director job, I said, how dare they? I've been here 27 years. I deserve that job. So I called up my mentor at UCOP. I said, I'm just going to leave. I'm an empty nester. I can find a job anywhere. She's like, wait, wait, stop, stop. So you built all this credibility, you built this great reputation at UC Berkeley, and you're just going to get up and leave? No. Why don't you go talk to the person and what opportunities there are? That was a really great sanity check for me before I made some drastic decision, which would not have been good, okay? How do you present yourself? So cultural differences, body language. How do you sit in a meeting? Arms crossed or are you inquisitive? Are you nodding your head? I remember recently I was at a meeting and one of my managers said to me, oh, you were doing your bobbing off your head nodding thing. I said, I wanted to make sure people knew I was listening, right? <laughs> Body language. Communication skills, both verbal and written. When you're sending somebody an email, you're communicating with them. We make sure you read it twice. Make sure if you think it's a hard message you're sending out, send it the next day. Verbal communications. Um, I wanted to talk about cultural differences. I'm not just talking about, you know, you coming from another country. I'm actually talking about gender, race, um, age, and from another state. Uh, my current boss is from New Jersey. Let me tell you, we've had to tell him a little bit about our culture. There's a cultural difference from the East Coast. <laughs> Okay, active participation, sit at the table. Um, I know we've heard about lean in, but I say sit at the table. 
you know, sit, sit down and step up. Get out of your head. How many times have we sat in a meeting quietly and we're thinking about the question in our head and analyzing and all of a sudden Susie's raised her hand and asked the question and, you know, the big boss sitting at the table said, good question, Susie, and you're like, darn it. Why didn't I ask that question? So get out of your head and be in the moment. Professionalism. So definition of professionalism is skill, good judgment, polite, constructive behavior, and I added dress for the job. People may say there is no dress code at UC Berkeley. There is a dress code at UC Berkeley. Please, you know, dress for the job. If I'm sending somebody to represent CSSIT, I'm looking at can they be articulate? Can they participate? You know, how are they dressed? Can they represent that level of position? So there is a dress code. Be aware of your audience, emotional intelligence. There's lots of books written on that, so um, read up on that. When you walk into a room full of people, you know, I'm trying to look around and make sure nobody's kind of thinking, oh my God, this woman's so boring, but I'm not. I see smiles and nods, so I think I'm doing good, right? Be aware of your audience. Your brand and label, self-assessment. So first time I met with my career coach, he said, Brenda, what's your brand? Said, what do you mean, what's my brand? I'm not a ketchup bottle, I'm a person. What's my brand? And he said, yes, if you were going to tell somebody about your skills or your strengths, how would you describe that? Right? Really get comfortable with that. It's really hard for us to talk about what our strengths and skills and what our brands are. And as you talk about it, people hear it and word gets out. You know, my strengths are I'm an excellent manager, I am passionate about customer service, and I really like changes. So anytime there's a new opportunity and a change, I'm gonna jump right in, okay? So you create that and make sure you market it. Fill the void, step up, don't be passive. Is there anything I can do for you? Be visible. Job descriptions at Cal give you a lot of flexibility. Yes, job descriptions are protection, right? If you're being asked to do things that are outside of your job description and they're insulting, sure, they are definitely there. But I have never let a job description hold me back of what I want to learn and what I want to do. So um, don't, don't be held back by job descriptions. Volunteer for projects no matter how small. Um, minutes at a management meeting, long, long time ago, I was not on a management team, and I asked the director there, I said, oh, can we have minutes from your management meetings? And she said, well, we don't have anybody taking minutes, and it's really hard. I said, I'll do it. I'll take minutes at a management meeting. And one of my colleagues said, really, you're going to do that? I said, oh, yes, I am. I got to know exactly what was going on in the management team meetings. They were talking about a big project, who's going to lead the SAIT service desk and desktop support efforts. And I said, oh, I'm going to do that, <laughs> right? So it, it really paid off. No job is too small if you're learning something. It's all about learning. Don't say, show me the money. Show me the opportunities and new exciting work. Every time I have done that, I have been compensated small. It's okay, but that's what has helped me on this campus. So in conclusion, uh, we are a learning organization. Keep learning. Take laterals. Safe environment for taking risks within reason. Informational interviews, mentors and network, it's really important on this campus to keep connected. Fill the void. Your active participation is needed. There's always, with our budget cuts, there's always extra work that someone needs to do. Volunteer for work, big or small. Active search, job postings. Our job postings churn every 14 days. If you haven't looked at the job postings in the last 14 days, you might have missed out on your dream job. Okay, so keep looking for that. With that, thank you so much. I hope you got at least one thing out of this and go Bears.